Okay, welcome back to this data analysis part of our XPS for Beginners course. Uh, and in this video, we're going to be looking at asymmetric peaks. So if you cast your minds back to uh, the fundamentals session part five, uh, we discussed why we get asymmetric peaks. Uh, and here we're just going to be looking at how we can best deal with those when it comes to actually processing the data, which line shapes are good, um, and how to know if your peak models uh, are working okay. So, I'm just going to pop back over to CASA and have a look at a first example. Uh, nice and simple, we're just going to look at graphene. We've only got one peak to think about. Um, so, we can start with our background. So, we're just going to pick a Shirley, standard Shirley background here. Um, this is a graphene overlayer, so uh, I believe it's on copper, yes. Uh, so it's quite a small peak, it's not bulk graphene. Um, we're just going to have a look at the the uh, main photo emission itself and we'll just kind of ignore any of these small shake up peaks down here for now. Uh, just so we can just so we can get to grips with um, the line shapes themselves. So I'm going to create a new peak. Um, and so, so far we've been looking at these LA type void line shapes. Um, where we're looking at the the kind of tail spread and the width of the Gaussian used to modify the peak. So if we take this down very low, you can see we've got a massive tail. And if we take it to another extreme example, oops, you can see we have a uh, the 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 kind of opposite there. Um, so we've got these modifiers here, A and B. What we're going to do is just add in another one, um, separated by commas. So we've now got uh, A, B and Z, um, which we can use to kind of independently modify each side of the peaks. So rather than um, just having two numbers separated by a comma, we've now got three numbers separated by a comma, but still LA brackets um, and everything contained within there. So we'll just start off at one um, and we'll look to modify either of those. So to start with, let's just again, we'll go to a fairly extreme example, go to 0 0.5, and you can see straight away we've got, if we try and fit that, we've got more of a tail spread on the high binding energy side than on the low binding energy side. The low binding energy side looks like it fits quite well already, um, just with putting in a, a value of one. Uh, so we'll leave that for now and we'll just modify this. Bring it up, fit, we're getting close. Just move up in increments. Okay, so it's probably somewhere between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7, so we'll try 0 0.65. Um, and we've now got something which is kind of going through this this high um, binding energy data here. One feature which you can use to have a look at how well your peak models are going through your peak is this residual up here. Um, and so we can see we've got um, pretty good fit. I mean, anything around one and below is 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 good. We when you get down to noisier and noisier data, it's generally harder to get these residuals to uh, decrease just because of the signal to noise. Um, but uh, that's another tool in your arsenal for helping you um, to to understand what's good and what is uh, what needs work. So now we've had a look at something nice and simple. Um, we're just going to move on to another example. And look at some palladium metal. Uh, so this is, oops, should delete these. So this is a uh, palladium metal, uh, actually recorded with a, a silver anode, so slightly harder X-rays than um, we've been looking at so far. So again, we're going to create our regions around the metal peaks and. Actually, let's use the create times two function and use our doublet separation 5.26 for palladium and go to fit. Um, 
so as this is pure metal uh, which has been sputter cleaned we obviously know that this asymmetry is due to the uh, the shake up processes rather than any oxide so we're going to adjust our line shapes uh, and we've got quite a quite a sharp um, kind of Gaussian function down at the the low burning energy side so we'll start with just separating our void type line shapes into um, two functions that we can modify and then we'll start with quite a quite sharp value for for our low burning energy side you can see that fits quite well in fact that generally fits quite well already which is nice um, and it, maybe we just want to increase on the the uh, three over two a little bit uh, but it's important we use the same line shapes for both so we can just kind of play with our tail spread until we get something that looks sensible uh, and that looks pretty good let's have a look at the residual yeah so again we're, we're pretty close to one we can play around with these numbers you know to kind of uh, improve this fit a little bit more um, so uh, so do grab the example data sets again if you're on YouTube head to the, the Guru page which is linked in the description below grab yourself some example data sets uh, and just have a play see how these numbers change the the peak models when they go in uh, and it will just give you a feel for for how best to, to model these asymmetries a lot of times you know if you if you if you're modeling unknown samples then it's probably quite good to get some bulk references uh, a lot of XPS instruments have got metal foils available uh, either in the instrument or uh, uh, available to run uh, and of course there's literature as well there's plenty of literature out there in which you can have a look at some of the line checks people have used to, uh, to model peaks such as uh, these metals before just be aware um, of things like pass energy and um, experimental conditions so you're, you're using something similar um, but if you if you're not confident, speak to your friendly local XPS experimental officer, and I'm sure they'll be able to help. Um, we're going to look at one final example now, which is nickel nickel metal, just to kind of go through another complication. So I'll just we'll just look at the uh, the three over two. Um, for simplicity for now right so obviously we've got a lot of asymmetry in this peak um, but you can probably see already there is something else in there so nickel 2p from metal also has these little shoulder peaks here which are the project of uh, the the result of um, surface and bulk plasmons in in the metal so kind of additional shake-up peaks we need to be aware of and we need to fit so we can slide these over there should be one in here and one in there uh, and in fact oops These do something more sensible. <clears throat> and then we will uh, start adding in our asymmetry. So 
so once again we we'll start with our um a three term line shape uh, and again we can see that the low binding energies this is fitting quite nicely already so we'll just start by modifying the high binding energy um we'll just try and bring that tail in a little bit and then maybe improve the spread and you can see obviously as we kind of edit one thing we need to go back and just make adjustments to the other side so that it fits a little bit better and um, so it's often just a case of playing with some of these um, until you get something that looks sensible so that's starting to look all right on the high binding energy side low binding energy side still needs a little bit Okay, and there we have something which is, is starting to look like uh, a good way to represent this data, uh, including these um, these plasmon peaks in there. So nickel is not the only metal in which these appear, uh, and it's just something that uh, you need to just be mindful of uh, if you are fitting metals, um, and just kind of be aware that they're there and be aware that you need to factor these in um, to your fits when you are putting in uh, asymmetry to your metals as well. <clears throat> so, in summary, <laughs> ignore the typo, the LA line shapes that we've, we've gone through here do provide good practical fits. Uh, You'll probably notice if you go through um, a lot of literature, historically, uh, Donny Exungic line shapes have been used quite frequently. Um, however, these don't tend to work quite so well with a lot of the backgrounds that we use. Uh, and so LA line shapes are generally a little bit more uh, configurable with those. Uh, and so we would, we would kind of generally recommend that you use those um, to at least to start with. Uh, and these line shapes do allow you to modify the high and low binding energy tail spread independently uh, and and really get a feel for how your model is interacting or is, is fitting and describing the data that you uh, you have to hand so thank you for listening and uh, and watching and up next we're going to be looking at some quantification in part seven so we will see you there thank you <laughs>